All right, I'm gonna show you now how to use custom geometry uh, to create your images. And uh, you're gonna run into this pretty much probably immediately. Um, the two images that I showed you, uh, the curtain image and the logo image, uh, well, we're all created in about five seconds using uh, Pixelmator. I like Pixelmator. Uh, it's just like Photoshop, uh, not as advanced, very simple to use. I use that for all my quick stuff. Um, but Pixelmator, uh, by the way, is, is right there. Uh, there's Pixelmator and Pixelmator Pro. I don't have Pro because if I want Pro, I'll use my Photoshop. Uh, but anyway, Pixelmator is very easy. I took my logos and I went into Pixelmator and I created a uh, uh, 1920 by 1080 uh, image, uh, file, whatever you call it. And uh, I used that to then add in my logo and add in the backdrop. And the reason I did that is because the images didn't actually match that dimension. So I wanted them to be the perfect size. So I added that in there. I'm going to show you what happens if you don't do that first. You can do that right in QLab. And it's very, very easy to do. So uh, in this case, when I fire my curtain image, which was designed to be an image of 1920 by 1080, it fits, whoops, it fits, uh, it fit, it fits perfectly inside the entire screen um, because the screen is a full 1080 screen. Now, if I add in the original file, the aspect ratio from the 1920, does it show that there? Dimensions, here you go. So on this curtain image, the dimensions are 1920 by 1080 right here. If I click on the original file, the original file is a much higher resolution of 300 by 300, and the uh, dimensions are, I believe that's 4K, isn't it? Or close to it. Uh, 4,288 by 2,848. Now the dimensions are different ratio, aspect ratio. So it's not just a higher quality file, it's actually a different physical shape. So if we go connect that to QLab, now we fire that image you'll see how there's a black line on both sides. And I'll show you, if we fire the other one, how different that looks, okay? So that's what actually happens, is the, uh, if you fire that, it doesn't fit. Now, you can make it fit very easily by going down to Custom Geometry, or in this case, a simple check mark by hitting Preserve Aspect Ratio. So you're gonna highlight the cue that's not fitting properly, and we're gonna hit preserve aspect ratio, which is on. And as you can see here, the yellow lines are showing it is not fitting properly, okay? We can make that a little bit bigger right there, sweet. So um, we're gonna turn that little checkbox off. And now it stretches and forces the image to fit exactly where you wanna go. So in two seconds, you managed to drag a file that did not fit your stage. And with one click, it now fits beautifully. And as you can see, it instantly changes it right on the screen live um, in the show or in rehearsal. You can see it fits perfectly. Now, um, I'll show you another way. So let's go to my logo and let's do the same exact thing with the logo. The original logo um, is dimensions of 727 by 709 pixels. Very random size. Okay. So I drop that in there, attach it to my QLab TV, and uh, as you can see, that's what the image is going to look like. And uh, if I hit go, that's what it looks like. Now it does fit to the full top and bottom of the frame, and it does remain a perfect circle. That's what you want. However, if you have that unchecked to go the full screen, it now looks horrible. It now did a stretched version and does not look nice at all. Um, so to give you an example, we would want to use, let's hit stop first. We would want to hit this one first, which is our backdrop. And that one is stretched with the preserve aspect ratio off. And we want to put this logo on top, but now it looks horrible. So we're going to go ahead and put preserve aspect ratio. And now that fits just perfectly. Um, except the logo is ridiculously big. Now, it depends on what you're doing. If you have a small TV set and you're at a trade show and you want the logo to be as big as you can from 30 feet away, then that might fit perfectly for you. In my cases, I am sometimes performing on, like here, I'm performing on about a 50 foot wide LED wall. 
I don't want that logo to be 50 feet wide. That's just way too big. So I'm going to go down here to custom geometry. Now custom geometry allows me to move this wherever I want. Isn't that cool? So um, I can do so many things with custom geometry. I can literally uh, make that look like it's all the way on the screen in the back. Um, I could have it up here. I could put two of these, one in each corner of that curtain right there. Uh, pretty easy to do. You just copy, paste, and uh, I'm gonna move. Whoops, I'm gonna move that one over to here. And by moving, by the way, I'm just grabbing anywhere in this surface and then dragging. Okay. Uh, sometimes if you have an image too big, you won't be able to find it. You just grab in there and you move it around until you finally see where it is, because it can go off of the screen as well, which you will use in animation later. So if I fire that one, now we have a logo on each side. Um, doesn't look that great, but there's an, a reason, you know, maybe possibly you want to do that. Um, so that's that's our custom geometry. The venue I'm working right now, the LED wall, is on top of the second set of stage risers. So the stage kind of has a flat surface, then it has a staircase, and then a second little um, stage above. And the LED wall is above that. So <clears throat> let's say you don't want the, the effect that the ground is stopping there. Let's say you want to create the effect that the curtain goes all the way to the floor behind you, even though they can't see it. So in that case, you would go to Custom Geometry. Now you can see the screen, the, the curtain is way too big. So we're going to uh, go to the scale right here. And just for easy purposes, we're going to click the lock, which locks in the aspect ratio. We're going to zoom out by dragging my finger up and down these numbers, or of course you could type them in manually. I'm going to get it to go to there, and then I'm going to um, do the width. I'm going to stretch the width as far as I wanted it. So let's say I didn't want to have um, the, uh, the curtain sides there. I wanted it just to be the curtain like that. I could do that. And now you see my image over here just looks like that. Um, but I'm going to zoom in like that. And I want it to be taller, which is the original version, as you can see, it looks taller like that. If I lock aspect ratio, you can see it stays in perspective, but now it's missing the top and bottom. So I could then drag it down here, and now I don't have that dark spot in the bottom anymore like it was before. I could get rid of that by making it just like that. So you have total control of your imagery, and uh, it saves everything just by leaving it in that location. So if I hit stop, I could then hit the curtain image, which is the new curtain, uh, and then I could either choose to use this logo, or I could choose to add those two logos on the sides like that. And uh, if I really want to have fun, <laughs> I now have <laughs> Mickey Mouse. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. Okay, um, so now you have an idea about custom geometry. Let's uh, let's move on.